I loved Vogue State. Her reading it on stage, because I'm a stage poet. I've done some slams, mm. and um, so so stage work is is my passion. And then during the Mod Po Plus, I found Ferlinghetti, and his reading of it is so snarky compared Baseball to reading canto. it. Baseball canto, yeah. Yes, snarkiness, just pure snarkiness when you when you hear him reading it yes. versus reading it to yourself. Yes. And that was the first time I'd ever heard him read it. Yeah. I had read it myself, and I did any. Does anybody else hear the snarkiness? Oh, totally. It's sticky. That performance is sticky, meaning it's like almost vaudevillian. Okay. Okay, as long as I'm not the only one that hears it, um, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> hey, Eileen, thank you for being a mod poer, and thank you for bringing up the importance of performance, and thank you for performing poetry. Quick responses to the just the general question that Eileen is interested in, performativity, the sound of the poet, in the case of Ferlinghetti, which is a poem that some of you probably don't know, this kind of... Um, Oh my gosh, uh, just over the top, you know, sound. So, uh, Dave first. Yeah, I think I have a dissenting view on Rogue State uh, in the sense that I find it really, really, really difficult to listen to. And I know that's largely the point, um, but I, I find it so unpleasant that it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, I get the point, um, but I... I don't like it that much where I don't want to subject myself to it. And I think that's okay because like, I, I do get the point and I'm not saying that it's not poetry. I shouldn't like it or anything like that. But um, I think it's okay to just personally not like it, but still appreciate it. Um, it it's almost like how I view bananas because I love the concept of bananas and they're great. They make so much sense, but the actual experience of eating them uh, is not something I enjoy despite wanting to. So um I recognize that, you know, bananas are great, but they're just not going to be a part of my day-to-day -day experience. And I wow. think that's okay to do that with poems, too. Um, and that's how, what uh, my impression of Rogue State is. Oh, that's my all. God. That was a lightning round. No, I, uh, Dave's actually bespeaking a point of view that a lot of Modpo people feel about the Waldman, and which is why it's there. Kate, Kinar, Amber Rose, real quick each. Kate? Yeah, extending from what Dave said, um, I think... For me, what's so intriguing about her performance is, and I haven't heard her perform it live personally, but um, returning to the idea of the laughter in the Creeley poem, is it funny, is it not? In the recording, the Modpo recording of, of Ann Waldman performing Rogue State, the State, there's a lot of laughter. And I just have to wonder if it's uncomfortable laughter, if the audience knows always when she's performing it, whether they're laughing yeah. with her or at her or yeah. with discomfort. Yeah. Um, I think she's courting discomfort. I think she's trying to be ugly and unbecoming at yes. times. Witchy, witchy. It's, really, yeah. it's very radical in yes. that way. And I think she's playing with the audience and the audience's reaction. Yes. Well, I, the recording was in this room. Uh, and she, it was a smaller version of the room because we've renovated it. But she was behind the podium, and there was a little space, a, a, a little, little triangular space behind her in the old arts cafe. And she was so she was using her proximity to the microphone to go back and forth to to do to p uh, modulate her volume by proximity to the mic. And at one point. She moved so far back, she crashed into the back wall. And when she moved forward, she knocked the podium and the mic. And it was at that point she herself laughed. She was doing this sort of final rogue state. I'm in a rogue state of mind. And everybody started laughing. I would say with, but also we were worried that Ann Waldman would tip over the, the, the podium and the mic would crash. She was so roguish. It was amazing, yes. So that's, this is totally relevant. And I would, here's the term I would use. We're going to turn to Kinar. Here's the term I would use. The term is paraphonotextuality. Paraphonotextuality. That is, 
The phonotext is the sound of the recording of the poem, but the paraphonotext is all the laughter and the noise of the podium and the crashing of the mic, and that paraphonotextuality is only in a particular performance, and Ann Waldman is the best at producing in others paraphonotext, which is permanently on record in pen sound everywhere you hear Waldman, not just Waldman, but so many others. And another great example is, of course, Ginsburg getting drunk when he reads America. And everybody is so drunk in the audience that you can actually hear the gallon jugs of bad red wine crashing against each other. That's paraphonotext, too. I just love how Waldman pulls that off. It is just so fantastic. Um, Kinar and Amber Rose, quickly each. I love uh, the kind of the, some of the terminology Kate was using in terms of it being this kind of ugly, unbecoming thing. Um, the word I was thinking about was kind of abject um, in the sense of like Chris Davis idea of like the thing we thrust aside in order to live. I feel like I really hear that in Rogue State in a way mm -hmm. I find totally delightful. Um, mm -hmm. It's so guttural and you can really like feel it mm -hmm. as a set, a set of sounds coming from a body, which I think is tremendous. Um, uh, and yeah, that kind of has this effect too of just really defamiliarizing this thing of like the rogue state, which is this term that is trying to kind of accomplish some sort of political disavowal or whatever, right? It's kind of mm. often tied up in empire speak and it's like, that's okay, right. let's grab that term back and really like put it right. into the body. And I think that's right. pretty sweet. Yeah, well said. Uh, Amber Rose quickly and then Dan. Okay, really quickly. I. I'll just make a comment about um, the Jane Cortez piece because what I'm thinking about there is not just what she's doing with her voice, but about the sonic atmosphere that she creates. So she's accompanied by a musician and um, thinking about, oh, I forgot the phrase that you were just using, par paraphonal Paraphono context. text. Yeah, about? the paraphonal text. Yeah, so uh, Jane Cortez chooses to create a sonic context in which the poem is delivered, which is what the, the accompaniment is doing. And that's adding a whole other layer of meaning. So whereas the rogue, the sort of um, instability that we hear in Anne Waldman's voice, it's the accompaniment behind Jane Cortez that's like creating this unstable, chaotic feeling environment. And then her voice is layered on top of that. And her voice is actually quite rhythmic. Um, go in the she got, she got, he got, he got. Um, but the the sort of discordance that's created between the two is is really, really rich and interesting. Yeah. So Dan, what do you have to say? Dan says, Dave, since you stepped on rogue state and slipped, could you record a version that you do like? Holy shit. <laughs>